Till Pepe Such a nightmare, I thought you were an Apple Watch. Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. And today, a bit of a follow up to my last Seiko video. If you missed it, do have a look back. Uh, this is a series where I identify kind of bargains, sweet spots when it comes to buying affordable watches. Now, this is my wristwatch check today. It's the Yammer uh, Bronze Superman. Never owned a bronze watch before this. I sold my steel one if you Guys, remember, I've been wearing it deliberately, doing cardio, sweating on it uh, in the shower. I really want to see what happens to the bronze. I've never owned the bronze watch before, so this is a very new, intriguing experience for me. Uh, so far, I think it's going a little bit more gold in tone, which I really do like. Now, before we get into looking at some mods, we should also distinguish and clarify the difference between a watch mod and a Franken watch, because as you guys know, I've railed against them on the channel uh, endlessly. So let's take a look. A Seiko mod is a customized watch using most often aftermarket parts or components custom built by specialists. They are designed to work with other Seiko parts and it is this compatibility that is the key to the watch functioning as it should. Just like a store-bought 100% original Seiko from retail. A Franken watch, on the other hand, is a perfunctory mish-mash of all kinds of crudely thrown together components, even sometimes from different brands entirely, in order to fool a newbie watch buyer to think they are getting something better than they actually are. There is always a level of deception here. The scores of Franken Oris watches and Fortis watches perhaps is the best example on eBay. Sourcing parts from all over the place becomes problematic as they are often not designed to work in cohesion with each other, and this leads to the inevitable reliability problems, not to mention the legal implications of trying to resell it. Most Seiko mods are created by enthusiasts, and it is that passion, along with an enormous community and vast supply of parts, that enables Seiko modding to be ever more credible and a growing part of the watch hobby. However, just like with any watchmaker or seller, always do your homework, as there still are just as many bad modders as there are good ones. So what's prompted this burgeoning cottage industry? Well, it has a lot to do with Seiko themselves and of course their rising prices. It's left a bit of a vacuum in the, I don't really like to say entry level, but the affordable level watch market. This has also coincided in recent years with the rise of the micro brands. Their ability to now offer those in the know with more unique designs, exclusivity with small production numbers, and in a twist of irony often based on Seiko movements, is a highly compelling offer. Another contributing factor is the shift in pricing as Seiko continues its cyclical price hiking, which has resulted in watch modding becoming more a viable option. 
The ever shrewd and resourceful Seiko Corporation itself has even drawn inspiration from the modders. Look at the Street Fighter 5KX limited editions. They look like the fun and lively creations of an enthusiast rather than the more conservative Seiko 5 collection that went before. Love it or loathe it, we have to respect their ability to move with the times. Yeah. Oh, damn. Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, where's the best place to buy these marvelous creations? Well, essentially, you have three options, but two of them are, is what I recommend. The first is obviously do what I did and hire a seasoned and experienced professional. For my Seiko Panther Cub, I partnered with Jeff at Watchmakers 4 based in the USA. This particular mod was the culmination of a series of modding projects until I settled on the rather more diminutive SKX013 based version. The reason for hiring him was twofold. Firstly, his access and mastery of expensive equipment that could get the results I wanted. For example, the black Sarah coating, the water pressure testing to ensure it meets its depth rating, and the ability to customize specific parts to my exact requirements. However, the price soon escalated, and for a project like this, closer to $1,000. Crazy, I know, but when you take into consideration the cost of all the parts, which were premium materials like ceramic uh, bezels, to upgrading the movement, even custom bead blasting the case back to highlight the high polish of the wave motif. And let's not forget the cost of the actual labor. It's soon all mounted up. For those in the UK and Europe, I'm currently, as we speak, working with the extremely punctilious Paul at Tempus Watches on a new project. He runs a similar highly professional operation and I sincerely recommend him. However, the details on that project I will keep as a surprise as it's not quite finished yet, so stay tuned. The second place to find a more affordable mod is of course eBay. Yeah, you guessed it, right? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a big eBay fan. But the advantage there is you can also find them used, uh, which does kind of uh, lower the price a little bit. Check out this amazing dial work from a watch modder in Japan. A modern interpretation of the iconic Great Wave, which, in case you didn't know, is a woodblock print by the Japanese ukayoi artist Hokusei. Famously adopted by Seiko as a motif for their case backs, this skilled artisan offers a lacquer version, which gives it an exquisite three-dimensional quality. Based on an older Seiko 5, these bespoke pieces are like literally having a work of art on your wrist. Very fun and very cool indeed. Next we have Hibachi Mods based in LA. He specializes in more contemporary themed mods, from faithful homages of luxury icons to abstract and vibrant dials. The Seiko Nought has to be my favorite, the rich man's alternative to the Patek of course, because at the end of the day, you don't have to pay as much and you'll probably save a lot more money and have just as much fun if not more. Also, if you really think about it, it'll probably last a lot longer having the redoubtable and ultra robust Seiko Calibre inside. There is of course a hidden bonus here with buying one of these homage watches and that is uh, you get to upset the overly sensitive watch snob. Check out this bold PVD Yachtmaster inspired diver he recently sold. I adore the subtle Sagaya wave pattern on the dial. It includes sapphire glass and the hackable and manually winding automatic NH36. Very nice indeed. Notice how his listing has everything clearly laid out and in detail. Absolutely outstanding. But if you fancy a Marine Master 300 or a Grand Seiko SBGH255 but you don't want to spend several thousand, sometimes a Seiko mod can be a tribute to their own higher end divers, like this superbly modded piece by Watch Source. With a double domed sapphire, 4R36 movement, a ceramic bezel, and an alluring waffle style dial, it punches way above its weight for the price. The Rolex Submariner has to be one of the most desired and equally ubiquitous watches of all time. But these days, the price of a decent 5513 is imponderable, almost verging on the ridiculous. 
Or perhaps you love the style and you just don't see the justification or need to spend that much money. Well, this stunning NH35 automatic based mod from Gusto Sportland in Portland might just be the ticket. It really captures the look and feel of the older subs in a 39mm case, an exaggerated domed crystal, appropriate faux patina on the loom, and even the bezel is bi-directional, just like those early Rolexes. What's the expression? I, I believe it's uh, shut up and take my money. <laughs> Talking of Rolex, Father Time Watches in California, which you can find both on Instagram and eBay, has some of the best Rolex themed mods out there. Their maxi case based Yachtmaster and Hulk homages are particularly impressive. The radiant and enchanting sunburst dial in that lovable emerald green is simply mesmerizing. The evocative sculpted bezel of his interpretation of the Yachty is just as beguiling. But perhaps my favorite is the mill subs with those broadsword hands and dials marked with a T for tritium. As I'm sure you all know, the chances of most of us ever finding a mill sub and then forking out a king's ransom for it are slim indeed. However, being able to have something actually usable, this affordable, and dare I say tougher, from a brand like Seiko, that, let's be honest, is more important with a longer history of innovation and arguably more integral to horological history than any other watch brand in the world, well, now you start to see why Seiko is just such a strong choice at this price range. So if Seiko is so good, why not get something that honors their own undeniable legacy? Ever fancied a historic and highly desired 62 mass, Seiko's first diver from 1965, or how about the famous Captain Willard 6105 worn by Martin Sheen in the 1979 film Apocalypse Now? Don't have thousands to spend or maybe it's just not a priority right now? Well, no problem. Time Slot, based in the Philippines, does wonderfully faithful mods of each, along with a ton of superb aftermarket dials to upgrade almost any Seiko you may have. Well, what about the progenitor of all modern dive watches, the Blanc Pain 50 Fathoms? One of the most beloved affordable Seiko 5 dive style watches is the SNZH series that has been around for donkey's years. At 42 millimeters, they have very short lugs and wear a lot smaller, pleasing many wrists, including my own. In fact, I had one modded myself and loved it until I swapped it in an exchange with a fellow watch enthusiast friend of mine. Even without modification, they already have a strong similarity to the 50 Fathoms, so much so they are colloquially nicknamed the 55 Fathoms. This is perhaps the easiest and most affordable to mod, as there are plentiful parts and not much is needed to be done. The addition of a fully loomed bezel and custom dial can dramatically transform this watch. Muller and Son in California have an extensive collection to choose from, referencing many of Blanc Pan's most revered, lusted after, and thus expensive models. This gorgeous Barracuda Blanc Pan homage is a stunning example. But it's not just dive style watches when it comes to Seiko mods, like the following gorgeous creatures. Another great thing about Seiko is the sheer amount of different sizes available. The SNK 809, in particular, is a very affordable place to start. And here we see, in a similar modest 37mm modded Seiko 5 automatic from Doug in Palm Springs, which was influenced by the highly underrated Amiga Railmaster. Its charming, understated and balanced design translates so perfectly into this Seiko. But what if you want something entirely original? Well, sky's the limit with Seiko modding. If we return to the maestro Jeff at Watchmakers 4, we see the vast array of drastically different projects, from highly imaginative new creations to just simple tweaks or make a slight improvement. How much you have changed or upgraded is up to you. Or perhaps it's a confluence of different genres of watches, references, or even brands. The only limit rarely is your imagination, funds in your wallet, and the occasional issue in procuring parts. This is a valid point to always keep in mind. Watch modding sometimes can take a while extra while your watchmaker acquires the right components. 
When I toured the many watch factories in Switzerland, one thing the super high-end watchmakers all had in common was some kind of bespoke service when it came to finalizing your watch. At JLC, there was artisan enamel painters on their top floor. At Bove, there was expert gem setters and custom engraving. At Parmigiani, there was exquisite opal dial work going on. These bespoke services are typically only for luxury brands and the super rich who want something unique, unlike everyone else's version of the same thing. In a way, this is the ultimate expression of luxury. Having a watch the way you want it, no matter how drastic or subtle, for less than $500, it's difficult to beat a modded Seiko when it comes to fun, function, enjoyment and having a watch exactly the way you want it. So there you have it. A special thank you to everybody uh, involved that made this video possible. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to share your wonderful creations. Um, I apologize I could not include all of you, but of course uh, I had to make this video a little bit shorter because there were so many hundreds of amazing mods. Anyway, let me know your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and I will catch you in the next one. Okay. Ciao. Ah, Duken. Yes. <laughs> Take that watch snob. <laughs>